Um, thank you very much. Um, I must admit it's great to be here today and talk about um, our strategy, which has now come to realisation. We've now financed and have a billion dollars worth of renewable assets in operation and construction. So the company has been transformed into a very strong cash generating machine. The image you can see in front of you is our flagship site up in North Queensland. Uh, once a very large gold mine that's been repurposed into a renewable energy hub. And in the foreground, you can see the enormous mine pits that were mined out in the 80s and 90s that are ideally suited to create our pump hydro business and construction for that asset is underway at the moment. In the background, you can see a solar farm, which we built about three years ago. Um, as, long the, as long as the sun shines in Queensland, that, as, that asset generates strong cash flows for the business. Um, stepping through um, the presentation now, I guess um, GenX as a company is a truly diversified producer of clean, green, renewable energy. We're diversified by ge geographic location and by technology. Um, the management team now has a proven track record of delivering assets on time and within budget. And those assets now produce very, very strong cash flows. And we're now able to make very strong revenue and EBITDA guidance for many decades to come because of the contract structure of the assets which produce um, those strong cash flows to the business and over time dividends to our shareholders. And we're, we're now developing um, some lithium ion battery projects in Queensland which has the potential to provide some very rapid short term earnings growth to the business as well. In, in terms of where the assets have uh, located. Um, the main focus is in North Queensland and the image you saw before the old Kidston gold mine is being developed in stages. Um, of course the first stage is the operating solar farm. Um, the second stage is the construction which is our pump hydro project. That will be generating cash flows in 2024 and then we've got plans to develop a wind farm in the surrounding area. In Queensland also, we're developing um, the Baldacombe Battery Project, which is um, in the back blocks of Rockhampton. That project will commence construction before the end of this year, and will add a further $10 million of revenue um, to the business um, before the end of next calendar year. And in New South Wales, we've now got an operating solar farm. The Gemalong Solar Farm um, was built uh, um, last year and is now generating cash for the business. Um, I want to spend a few moments talking about the renewable energy industry and why we think we're at the start of a very, very strong growth phase. And that growth phase will entail very strong tailwinds that will drive the earnings of this business over the next five to ten years. And I draw your attention to the bar chart on the right hand side. And what that shows you is the renewable energy targets by various state governments in Australia, and in particular, you can see Queensland and New South Wales, which have targets of between 50 and 60% of generation from clean green sources. At the moment, whilst there's been significant investment in clean green energy in Queensland, New South Wales, they're only around 20% of, um, of generation from those sources. So we see an enormous opportunity for um, policy, government support to drive the growth of renewable energy from around 20% to in excess of 50% over the next eight to nine years. And there really is no other company better placed on the ASX to benefit from that growth than GenX Power. Um, of course, as a company producing clean green energy, we're very proud of our credentials in terms of CO2 abatement, um, commitment to the community and the environment. In terms of CO2 abatement, the portfolio saves almost 2 million tonnes of CO2 per annum that would otherwise be emitted if it was from fossil, fossil fuel generation. So that's um, it's a big number, but that's equivalent to around 350,000 households, so a very significant contribution indeed. Um, and in terms of the community and environment, I think um, we're very proud of our um, commitment to Indigenous engagement, Indigenous employment and um, employment to women and other people more broadly. Um, of course, we're very, very proud of our track record. Um, I mentioned we've now financed in excess of a billion dollars of assets in the renewable space, um, and that's resulted in two solar farms being built on time and on budget. 
And as a, as a shareholder of the business, I'm very aware that what really drives value is delivering and meeting shareholder expectations. And we've got a very, very strong commitment to not just drive news flow, but the activities that underlie that in terms of projects, generating strong cash flow, being delivered on time and on budget. And as we build out a portfolio, that's, that same focus and commitment is um, very much the front of our thinking. Um, we've, done, we've built this portfolio with what we consider to be tier one partners. And I'll just divide those partners into revenue partners, funding partners, and the people that help build these projects for us. So in terms of revenue, one thing that underpins each of our projects are long-term contracts. And these contracts generate cash flow and aren't influenced by energy prices or energy volumes. They're very, very stable contracts and I'll, I'll quantify those um, in a later slide. But each of those parties, whether they're Energy Australia, the Queensland Government, um, all have very, very strong credit ratings, which means the security of those cash flows is, is robust and, and bulletproof. So we're very, very proud of those relationships. In terms of the funding, um, we've been blessed with not just very strong market support from the stock market and some very significant institutional investors, but also um, J Power, one of the biggest Japanese power companies um, in Japan and one of the biggest globally, has taken 10% of Genix and is helping us to deliver these projects with some very specialist um, expertise in the hydro space. And of course, construction, um, we're very focused on delivering our projects on time and on budget. And what we tend to do here is partner with major builders such as John Holland, McConnell Dow, UGL and others and put all the construction risk on those groups so that we have a fixed price, fixed time contract. So if there is a cost overrun, if there is a time delay in the construction of any of our, of our projects, that's not to the account of Genex or its shareholders, it's being borne by the builders that are building the project. So it's a formula that's worked well in the past and we're committed to continuing that strategy into the future. I guess um, this slide, I call it the money shot. Um, ultimately, here we're here to, to derive value for shareholders, and at the end of the day, that comes from delivering cash flows and dividends to, to our shareholders. And you can see here in that bar chart, we provided revenue guidance from our projects, the two solar farms and the pump hydro, all the way to 2055. So there's very, very few companies on the ASTX that would even consider providing revenue guidance more than one, two, three, or four years. We can do so because of the, um, I guess, the nature of the contracts underpin our assets. They're very long life contracts. In the case of Pump Hydro, it's a 30 year contract that locks in the revenue, it escalates at CPI. In the case of the solar farms, it's um, locked in pricing from the Queensland government. So it's a very secure, stable revenue stream. It escalates at CPI over the next 30 years and it averages just over $82 million per annum every year, year in, year out, for the next 30 years. So the sum of those revenues exceed $3 billion of committed locked-in revenue, and that revenue um, has a very, very high EBITDA margin. The cost of operating these assets is modest. As you can imagine, um, in the case of solar farms, the sun is free, so the operations and maintenance costs are very low. The costs we do have are baked in under long-term contracts that escalate at CPI. So 80, 80, um, an 80% EBITDA margin, or 79 to be precise, is a very, very strong, secure EBITDA margin. And as this portfolio matures, um, the company um, will be making a substantial portion of those cash flows available to shareholders in the form of locked-in dividends. Okay, um, I guess the other key element which I would like to highlight is that in the case of our pump hydro project, which um, has been blessed in the form of very strong federal and state government support, we've been able to secure very low cost concessional financing. And there's a, there's a federal government body called the Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility. It's a development bank essentially, which um, has as its mission um, the objective of building or supporting large infrastructure in the northern part of Australia. And we were very pleased to be awarded a $610 million low cost loan. And we've now locked that loan in. Uh, we're now drawing down on that loan, but we've secured the interest rate 
uh, locked it in for the next 15 years. And that interest rate, blended with our other debt facilities, is less than 3%. So to have money locked in for 15 years at very, very low cost, I think really um, enhances the strength of the cash flows that we can pay out to our shareholders as dividends. Um, I want to spend a few moments talking about our growth strategy. And you can see here on this slide that we've clearly got 100 megawatts of, um, of solar farms that are generating cash today. Um, by the time the pump hydro finishes construction um, in 2024 and 2025, that will round the portfolio out to 350 megawatts of you know, long life infrastructure assets. But the plan is all about leveraging the skills and the relationships we've built up over the last six years and to do so now to rapidly grow our earnings. And we've identified um, lithium ion batteries as a way we can do that together with a wind farm. And essentially, we decided that Queensland is the right market for us. We understand the market very well here. We've got very strong relationships with the government, the transmission company and, and various funders. And we believe there's a window now to really roll out some um, you know, high margin rapid growth battery projects in Queensland to really cement the growth of the business going forward. And um, so that's a very, very exciting thing which we're committed to rolling out over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, just a few words on our Pump Hydro project. Um, it was um, funded earlier this year um, at a capital cost of just under $800 million. Um, it is the first Pump Hydro project developed in this country in the last 40 years. So it was a major undertaking and we're very proud to deliver that asset. Of course, that will balance out the network nicely because just near Brisbane, you've got the Wyvernhoe pump storage project owned by one of the government generators. Um, there's a few down south. Um, Origin Energy owned one near Sydney called the Shoalhaven uh, in the Kangaroo Valley. And of course, the federal government through Snowy is expanding one of their pump hydro plants. Uh, the reason why there's a growth in pump hydro and batteries now is because of some fundamental changes underway in the energy market. And of course, we've all heard about um, the decarbonisation of the economy, um, the fact that there's more and more wind and solar being um, built in the market. Well, that's fine for, for clean energy, but it lacks one fundamental thing, and that is reliability. So what the market really needs is a very low cost, efficient way to store energy to deal with the intermittency of wind farms and solar farms. And I like to think that GenX is well placed to, to capture that opportunity because we have Pump Hydro as our core technology, which is very low cost, mature technology to store energy. And that will be complemented by our battery strategy, which clearly um, stores energy at times of surface and dispatches that into the market. Um, just a, a few words on our existing portfolio, our operational portfolio. Um, the Kitson Solar Farm built three or four years ago is one of the better performing solar farms in the country. In fact, um, because of its location, it has the highest capacity factor of any solar farm in the country and one of the best in the world. Um, it truly is a stunning solar resource in northwest Queensland. So that project has a 30 year um, economic life with um, 26 years to run. Um, and of course, the key element here is the 20 year contract with the Queensland government, which pays a guaranteed price for every megawatt hour produced. So really, if the sun is shining, um, the company's guaranteed the cash flow from that asset into the company's coffers. Um, we've now complemented that with the Gemalong Solar Farm in New South Wales. That project was built last year and um, is now in the final stages of commissioning and is now um, very, very rapidly ramping up um, its contribution to the company's cash flow. So that, that project also has a 30 year economic life. And our strategy here at the moment is to sell into the spot market for energy and green certificates, but over time to contract a portion of that output with some major customers, um, major corporates or governments or the like of that. Um, so just a few more words on our battery plan. Um, this really is the short term revenue driver for the business. Um, the, the chart you can see there um, depicts the revenue stream we can expect from a typical battery development. And what that shows you is two revenue streams. One is what we call energy arbitrage, which is um, de depicted there in, in blue. And that's really nothing more than buying energy when it's cheap 
and selling energy when it's when it's expensive. So if you think about energy markets, um, of course, energy demand and energy prices change during the course of the day, and it's correlated with human behaviour and consumption of energy. So that's a very simple revenue stream to capture, and, um, and that will represent around 50% of the revenue stream for all our battery projects. Um, the, the green colour there depicts what's called FCAS, which is a payment made by the energy market operator for generators that can keep the grid in balance by providing energy when it's needed to stabilise the grid as required, and there's payments that are made for providing that service. And we, recommend, we, we estimate over the next 10 years that that will contribute around 50% of the revenue for our battery portfolio. Um, I, I do note, however, that the batteries that were built by Tesla in, um, in South Australia, they paid those batteries off within 18 months by the FCAS revenues alone. So I'd like to think that those forecasts we put there, which have been prepared by our bank's market consultant, are conservative, and any upside, of course, will be cream for our shareholders. Um, our, our particular project, um, which we're working on first, um, the Baldwin Battery Project, is located at Rockhampton. You can see a picture here of the site. It's immediately adjacent to one of the biggest substations in Queensland. That substation is owned by Powerlink, the government transmission company, and we've got land immediately next door, and we're just busy now finalising um, the connection process to enable that plant to be built before the end of this year. But what we've gone with is a Tesla product. Um, Tesla from the US is one of the market leaders of battery technology. They use lithium-ion batteries and lots of it, and um, we will get those batteries um, transported to our site in shipping containers. We'll connect those shipping containers up into the grid. So the connection process itself is very straightforward. Um, we've secured the permitting, um, we've got the land, um, we've, we've finalised the agreements with Tesla for the product supply, and what we're doing now is just finalising the, the bank funding arrangements to get that um, project funded and, um, and into the portfolio. But it's a, you know, we like to think of that as a very, very exciting project, which is really going to drive our earnings um, over the next um, little while or so. Um, so we do have a wind project, and that's located immediately adjacent to our flagship site up at Kidston in North Queensland, adjacent to the pump hydro in the old gold mine. Um, we're currently doing a wind assessment. That's looking like a really good wind resource. And we've, we've partnered with J Power, the big Japanese utility I spoke about earlier. They'll be 50-50 owners with GenX on the development of that project. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very exciting project, which will come to the portfolio in, from a generation perspective in, in 2025. So, so really, if you look at our portfolio, um, this depicts the cash flows um, into the future. What I hope you can see is a diversified business. The portfolio is diversified by technology and it's diversified by geographic location. The cash flows provide utility style certainty in terms of cash flows um, with embedded earnings growth from contracts that escalate at CPI. Um, that underpins, um, I guess, the two operating solar farms. Um, they're, I guess they're set and forget now. They, they now just, just generate the cash as long as the sun shines. Um, we'll substantially step up our earnings once the pump hydro is in operations in 2024. Um, of course, that project is now fully funded in, in the construction phase. And of course, we'll drive our short-term earnings growth through this battery strategy, which I talked about. So look, I guess if you look at the company itself, um, market cap around $260 million. We've got about $70 million of cash on our balance sheet. So I like to think that we're a very conservatively funded, conservatively managed company, um, strong financial backing, from major shareholders, um, cash at bank, and um, operating assets. We've got a, a team of management that have built projects. And um, so just to wrap up, I guess you can see, I've mentioned the diversity of our portfolio. Uh, I mentioned the, the track record. We've got very, very strong relationships with government, both Queensland, federally, and with major funders. Uh, we've locked in revenue certainty for many decades, up to 30 years, and we've got a funded portfolio about the 350 megawatts. So I guess 
Um, what will drive um, value for shareholders will be the delivery of the strategy. We've certainly got a very strong tailwind in terms of a focus of market on renewable, clean, green assets, and we've, I'm very, very proud to present this opportunity to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon Kitson.